So good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to yet another Empower Hour. As promised, every last Saturday of the month, we are trying to deep dive into the WHO patient safety curriculum. And we have already done with seven topics, and today is So I think the recording got stopped in between, so no worries, so very warm welcome. So let me just pull up the presentation just for a few minutes to give you a few information around um, Annie's activities. So as I told you a little while ago, this is the eighth topic from the WHO patient safety curriculum, engaging patients and carers. And that is going to be discussed by second okay that's going to be discussed by mr vinod kumar he's one of our annie patient safety fellow of 2021 and all our fellows are involved in building the curriculum and delivering the topic as well and we hope that all the previous sessions in case you have not seen or your team members and your students have not yet seen Please visit Annie's YouTube channel and you will find all the recordings here. Even today's recording will be there once the event is over. Uh, so, um, just to inform you, a very important upcoming event that's happening in September 20th. From 11 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. we have this our annual patient safety conference. And uh, we believe that we should work towards no harm to our patients. And this time, the World Patient Safety Day is on 17th of September. And the theme given by WHO is medication safety. And the slogan is medication without harm. And that is the topic that we are going to deal with. That because many of the organizations will be having their activities. So we didn't want to interfere with that. And we are very uh, happy to announce that we have got some esteemed uh, leaders in the patient safety arena for this uh, conference. And we, our uh, you know, keynote address will be done by Dr. Michael Ramsey, CEO of the Patient Safety Movement Foundation from USA. And just a reminder that Annie collaborates with the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. And with that collaboration only, we are running the fellowship program. And they have reiterated that they are very happy to be associated with us and contribute to medication, uh, not patient safety, in our country. And we are very, very honored that we will be having Dr. Neelam Digra, Dingra, Unit Head, Patient Safety Flagship, WHO Geneva, Switzerland, joining us to set the context for the scientific segment. So we really hope that you will pass the word around and block your time and day on 20th. And we will see you back again September end for another uh, Empower Hour for sure. And we always, as usual, we invite more nurses to join our association so that we can make stronger. And in September, we will be looking forward to Ms. Vijaya Thongam, another patient safety fellow from 2021, discussing infection prevention and control. With that uh, note, let me just stop sharing this. And um, it gives me great honor to invite uh, Vinod Kumar to discuss topic eight from WHO patient safety curriculum. And all the best to Vinod, and um, so I hope more will be joining. But anyway, the uh, discussion is being streamed live on um, live on Annie's Facebook uh, page, and we are also getting it recorded. So now over to you. It is eleven sixteen, so maximum sixty minutes. Is what you have, so all the very best, and thank you for being here. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, good morning. Uh, this is Vinod from uh, Annie Patient Fellow. And 
So first, before starting, I would like to get your uh, commands on my visibility of my screen. Is it visible to everybody? Yes, Vinod. Thank you. So today, so today, uh, it's topic eight: engaging with patient and carer as the WHO safety curriculum. So I would like to share the thoughts and uh, WHO's curriculum uh, enlightenment on engaging with patients and carers, and most important of healthcare communication and patient engagement today. So as all know that the modern healthcare uh, system always claims to be patient-centered, but the reality for many patients is a long way from this vision. I hope everybody will be agreeing with me that every person has the rights to receive the helpful information about the quality of care they receive. So throughout this uh, uh, show, uh, just the thoughts about engaging the patients, how useful it will be, and there are certain communication tools which will be discussed where we can enhance the patient and patient carers engagement in the care system. So moving forward, like before starting my conversation, I would I would like to share a case story with you all so that you can just put the comments on the comments box about what 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 went right and what went wrong in that situation. So here is the case story for you all. So there's patient Miss Sandhya who was 32 years old, was six point five week pregnant and referred by a treating doctor for an ultrasound. Why this ultrasound was warranted was she was complaining about abdominal pain for last two days to his treating consultant. And as a follow-up, the treating consultant has ordered a trans-abdominal and trans-vaginal ultrasound for her. So she went to a clinic and uh, done her ultrasound on both and was waited. The clinic was had a lot of footfall on that day, were very busy, and the radiologist was uh, immense pressure in preparing the result documentation for them. So the ultrasound, which was taken from Ms. Sandhya, suggested that there is a right-sided ectopic pregnancy. And due to the high footfall and the busy day for the radiologist, the reports were being prepared in the busy, and it was not informed to the patients. The ultrasound films and the result was packed in a uh, envelope and was, it was distributed to the patient. Okay. So the patient, as the information was not shared, anything, uh, any urgent or warranted communication was not happened on that day. She just relaxed herself and thought to meet her uh, sir, treating doctor the next day. So once that comes in and immediately on the same day evening, she had an uh, you know, intolerable pain and went on to an emergency major abdominal surgery for her rupture ectopic pregnancy. So my dear friends, so what, what do you understand and what what's what the uh, thing which has happened here in this story? So what could be done better in this story? So any, any comments? I appreciate your comments in the chat box. So any, any comments in the chat box? I couldn't uh, see any of the comments till now. It's okay. Could be morning lethargy. I think you should just continue because nobody is putting their comments. So, so like uh, this, sto this story tells us an uh, important, important of, uh, you know, complete engagement and full engagement with patients and the need for the communication with them all times, all times without any of the you know, delaying. So if this story could have turned into an another uh, you know, uh, things where if the report is shared immediately to the patients on time, so she could have went and referred her doctors immediately. And this could have been an elective surgery rather than a major life-saving abdominal rupture ectopic uh, surgery. So, that's that's how the importance of uh, engaging the patients and communicating the patients is most important for us. 
So coming today, so we are going to discuss and we are going to understand how the importance and why the importance of patients' communications and carer engagement and how it's going to give us a positive outcome in our healthcare system. Few basic communication tools and techniques which will be discussed throughout this. And principles of open disclosure. So open disclosure, the right time and the right message to the patients and patients' carers can prevent us in most other legal things. And how and what can be the importance and the outcome of patients and carer as a partners in our communicating system. If we include patients and patient carer as our uh, partners, so that obviously is going to give us a positive outcomes in that. So moving forward, this is a question for each and everybody, why? Why engaging the patients and patient family is important for us? So do you think it is important for us to engage the patient and families in every communications, in every care processes, in every interventions which we are going to take for them? Yes, it will be yes for us. Yes, now as per the survey, which is conducted by PWC, the facts and the numbers are given for you here. 80% of healthcare receives rely on the internet of health for information. 77% of patient depends on internet. 74% internet users actively follow social pages of healthcare things. 42% of the internet users, viewers, consumer reviews before choosing the hospital. So you can know, like this numbers shows us that the information, what we have to need to provide is not adequate for the patients. So if we provide a complete information to the patients, likewise, if I'm not uh, clear with the data in a present day, so I might go for a reference for the other data. So such kind of incidents is happening in the healthcare chain for us. The incomplete informations or communications or right not on time can have this thing. So that's where the importance of patient engagement falls here. So to keeping that view on patients' engagements, now can verify. Yes, I would like to consider patients as a second pair of high in our care curriculum. So why this patient's care of eye? And I can give you a uh, uh, handful example on this. Why we need to consider patient as a second pair of eye. Like in, in an hospital which I worked, we started a hand agent project to improve the hand agent compliance. We started a hand agent project, which we termed it as a patient as a partner project over there. So we educated the patients that any of the healthcare professionals who comes and visit you before touching you or entering your room need to be sanitized with the hand, hand agent bottle which is given or uh, which is attached in the wall mounted and in your bedside. So they have to use that solution for hand agent before touching you. So this keeping this uh, as that small education and now patient becomes our partner in increasing the compliances for the hand agent. Uh, whenever any of the doctors or GDAs or during rounds, whoever enters the patient's room, in fact, their own relatives who comes to visit them, the first question the patient asks or tell us that, please do use the hand rub which is kept over there before entering my room or before touching my environment or anything. So this increases the consciousness for the patients and importance of hand hygiene before entering and ideally, after this project, we had an increase in the percentage of hand hygiene audit too. So everybody was started doing, and there was even a chit chat between the uh, doctors and nurses that now, nowadays patients are, uh, you know, committed to the hand hygiene that they are asking us to do hand hygiene before entering the room and before touching them. So that's that's how the intensity of patient as a partner can play a vital role and hand in a small project of kind of a hand hygiene, like patients are a second pair of eye for us in safety, patient safeties. 
And another one, the best example of another one where the patient is always considered to be a second pair of eyes. So it, it happens in my personal life. Like my grandmother is an uh, hypertensive patient. So regularly she gets a uh, Telma tablet. So during a uh, while there was a little change in the tablet dosage from the doctor from 80 mg to 40 mg as per the follow-up. So now she identified the size of the tablet on a fine day and asked me, let's know this is a wrong tablet which has given me the tablet doesn't be in this smaller size. It should be a little bigger size. So I am getting a wrong tablet today. And I was surprised to see that the tablet color shapes are being identified by my grandmother who is not that much uh, literate, who doesn't have much of health literacy towards that. But her consciousness on the tablet shape, size has immensely given the importance that she can act as an, an, an another, you know, a checklist, a checkpoint for reducing the medication error or the wrong medication for consumption. So this might be an, another example to make sure that patients are uh, as the second pair of high who can always help us we can always prevent from unexpected errors with the packages what we have in day-to-day -day life in the healthcare processes. So now, when patients have been in the patient care, if they are educated and involved, so they can alert the nurses, doctors, and other pharmacists. If they can share their knowledge about their symptoms, pains, and attitude, first. So always the research has shown there are fewer errors and better treatment outcome when there is a good communication between the patient and patient carers. So that's that's how the importance of uh, patient engagement is, is all about. So moving towards what what kind of things can be you know important while having this patient engagement processes. So. How, how we can understand that our system and processes are adapted or influenced by the patient as a partner. So let us view some uh, important uh, key performance indicators on patient engagement and patient uh, communications. So if, if a system, if a system being influenced by active encouragement of patients and care to share information, like we can elicit the information from them, try to have an open-ended question so that they share more information about their symptoms, about their wants and don'ts, about the treatment and interventional plan, so which can make them engage every day. Sympathy, honest, and respect is always warranted for the all patients and patient carers. So communicate effectively to us Whatever the communications need to be done, that communication need to be very clear and very effective on-time communication. Right? It is on on-time communication because that is one of the most important tool in keeping the patients informed and educated. Like, like there is an example, like as a smart nurse who came inside one of the patient's room and uh, you know acknowledged the patients and patients that under wished in the morning and she introduced herself in a round and was completely engaged and very verbal in whatever she was doing. She came to us, checked the vital signs, informed the vital signs to the patients and patient carers who was, who was uh, literally in confusions of what it could going to be normal or abnormal. So she was, she was very much concerned and keen in informing the vitals, even the numbers like a heart rate, everything. And she, come, she convinced that these are the normal values for patients. Now the prognosis is good. So that kind of information to the patients and uh, patient uh, attendant. So once this communication happened, they were so happy for the day that everything was informed to them. And at the end of the day, while they were going for discharge and they had mentioned especially that nurse's name, in the feedback and effective communication has been done and she got an, an a positive feedback for her care and communications. So open communications and effective communications with the patients and patient attenders uh, are going to you know, positive patient satisfaction in, the, in, in our system. 
So mostly, while we involve them in the clinical processes, it's it just, it just not not going to take uh, you know extra time or something. Like it's only that we are going to inform them what we are going to do and explain them whatever we are going to do. And the, the, the fourth KPI of this is obtaining informed consent. I, I, I agree, uh, you know, you, you'll be agreeing with me when I say that the patient room, when we are entering the patient room, it, it is kind of an, uh, you know, a personal invasion. Like nobody allows anybody without permission to enter their room. Even if we are in a room, we don't like persons entering the room and doing something without any acknowledging or without telling me what's going to be happen in the next few day, few minutes when they're whatever they're going to do. So that kind of information, like informed concerns, when for a, for for helpful purposes, like if they are going for proceeding for any procedures or any surgery, before surgery concerns, the doctors are going to explain what, what, what kind of surgery they are going to undergo, how long it's going to take, what is the cost and what are the procedures, where they are going to be incisions and how long it's going to take, what is the percentage of positive outcome in that, is there any risk in that surgery, a minimal risk to hire it, all these things will be explained before doing the concern. So informed concern, obtaining the informed concern is, is, is also an, one of the one of the important things in patient engagement. Um, other key, other key responsible, uh, other key indicators for this all, always show respect, show respect to the patients and the patient caregivers in respect of their religion and cultural belief. Accept their individual needs, ask what are their likes accept their needs and propose a plan according to their need. So not as like serving everything on their table and asking them to, you know, preferring our own, uh, you know, our, our own importance of what it is rather than getting it from the patient's, uh, you know, satisfaction. So that's the thing. And, and the next, next to discuss is, the understanding the basic steps of open disclosure processes. So open disclosure process is something is very important in the healthcare, uh, healthcare processes. Like if you consider all the errors which is happening in the hospital or any sentinel events which has happened in the previous hospital, if you go back and see retrospectively, you can identify all the root cause will end with miscommunication or no communications or wrong time communications. So this this has an you know very big effect and the negative effect in the healthcare processes. Like open disclosure processes gives you the right communications on right time and disclosing if there is any harm happened to the patient to so openly discuss with the patients that this is something has happened and we are, we are apology. We, we apologize for that and we are going to have this international on the lineup for the improvement of the mistakes which has happened. So this kind of open disclosure processes will increase the patient's confidence and trust in the healthcare system that they might believe and increase the patient's satisfactory rate in that. Applying patient engagement, thinking in all clinical activities, like involving the patients in all clinical activities from the admission to the discharge. So from the admission to discharge in sense, like when you're going to have, like if you're going to create a, you know, a, a wavelength, which is going to coincide with the patient thinking, like there'll be a lot of questions in the patient's mind when they, are, uh, when they get admitted. They might have, the questions of how long they're going to stay, who's going to be the treating doctor, how they're going to be get treated, how long it's going to be there, what is the financial burden which will affect them. So there must be a complete, uh, you know, uh, and I tell you where the patients get admitted. So if the patient is engaged from the right starting from the admission, from the history collection, giving the time for them to express their own signs and symptoms rather giving in a closed and questions, give them an open questions, 
like the, uh, you know, engage them in participating in each and every clinical activities, either it is a procedure or it is in any clinical decision making, bring their importance of patients and their patient caretakers, important that they are as a team member inside the clinical activities, asking their opinions, their preferences for the treatment modalities will always improve and healthcare communications. So keeping this uh, performance indicators in the mind that which might increase, which, which always have an, a positive effect on increasing the patient engagements and their communications. So the ability to recognize that the place of patient and carer engagement in clinical management is also one of the most important factors in keeping, uh, keeping the engaging the patients in all the decision makings in the clinical processes. So to complete all these uh, things, so to engage all these things, let us move on to certain communicative uh, you know, uh, techniques and tools where it will help us in engaging the patients and patient carers. So the first tool for the discussion is, the, fir the first tool for discussion is SegBeg. So the SegBeg S stands for set the stage like, this can be used to, you know, kind of whenever you're going to collect any informations like ISTI collection, especially in the nursing prospective, ISTI collections or the assessment, uh, during the assessment, uh, physical examination. So we can use this communications tool. Like S stands for set this stage. Now, this at this stage always warrant a complete and calm environment for a person who need to be very comfortable in giving the information. There should not be any distraction or any other disturbance during the conversations. So it might be a patient room or in a good satisfactory room environment where they are mostly promoted with open-ended question. So second E, E stands for elicit the information. So this elicit information like provoke questions to make sure that the patients are giving us the information regarding their conditions, symptoms, histories. Like they, they, they are not, you know, constricted to your answers of yes or no. Like for example, uh, do you have a vomiting yesterday? So this, this is a kind of a questions where it, it closed only with yes or no. So rather you can prefer us, uh, prefer us with the questions like eliciting information likewise with the open-ended questions where you can promote the conversations like um, would, 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 you, would I like to know that what was the disturbance or what was what, what is bothering you in last few days uh, that promoted you to admit here in the hospital. So now with this open-ended questions, they will come up with all the discomfort which they face for for and for, uh, and for and that last two days or in a week. So they will be coming up with most of the informations. So this gives us a uh, you know, uh, clear idea and how and what we can plan for the patient's condition. So give the information. The third one, G stands for give the information. So here, once this stage is set, information are collected, and now what you have from your side, so provide the complete information regarding what is the interventional planning, what was the doc, who was the doctor who is attending, how was it, just their preferences, and what this institution can provide for that patient's condition, so how the team is going to work. So complete, complete information is what we have to reach to increase the health literacy of the patients and the complete information for their interventional planning for the prognosis. So that gives and you know, uh, now the patient and the healthcare providers will be in the same page so that we created already a word of trust and the trust about what the process and about the institution. And next, the U in Segway stands for understands the patient's perspective. So now once you have given a complete information about that, so now you can take the patient's uh, understanding and perspectives, like is there any choice of the treatment that the patient need to make or any other wants by the patients or any other requests from the patients can be addressed in that way. 
Now, all the questions or the matter of communications are completely closed and there is no any uncovered, uh, you know, uncovered truth from the patients can be there. So we have opened up the communications. We are given the, as much as information from our side and expected the patient to be, uh, you know, uh, as a choice maker of his treatment and interventional processes. So that gives us a complete stage of hand-to-hand -hand, uh, keeping as a patient, as a team member in the interventional processes. So once this all these communications has ended, now we can move on into just like ending the encounter, just saying thank you for their time, thank you for their engagement, and thank you for truthful in their transparency in their communications, which helped uh, which helped them in you know planning the right kind of interventions for, for them. So this tool might enhance and enhance and uncover a lot of information which might, uh, you know, which might be the one of the most positive outcome by engaging the uh, patients in the complete uh, care processes. So that's how that's how the patient engagement and uh, patient uh, carers information will help us in planning a right intervention too. So moving forward and this moving forward into the next communication tool and this is one of the most familiar communication to most of the nurses and, uh, and things. You know, uh, even as my own my own experience in uh, teaching communication as an educator. So this edit tool is one of the vital part in the communication uh, processes uh, for in inductions. So all, all are much familiar about this edit tool, acknowledge. So this tool is always uh, meant to be followed for any procedures to be done or the first time when you're going to when you, uh, meet the patients, now you're going to acknowledge, you're going to do do a clear uh, controlled environment and the keeping that patient is not in an uncomfortable zone for any conversation or any procedures. So we are preparing the uh, patients to be in their own comfort zone so that the patient safety and their uh, and uh, self-respect is uh, completely acknowledged in that processes. So as any procedures need to be done, like a nurse who enters the room will acknowledge the patients by two identifiers, as everybody knows, the patient identifiers, two identifiers will be used to acknowledge them, then introducing them with their designations and as the staff nurses. So that's that's going to improve and get connect between the patient and the nurse who is going to be there for the next few minutes for any procedures. Just even for an, uh, a, a small procedure, a basic small procedure like IV, cannulation. So if a nurse goes and wishes the patients know the name, have a file in hand, follow the two identifier for the check and introduced herself that as, as I am the nurse, I am a staff nurse for you for this morning hour uh, from 8 o'clock to 2 p.m. So I will be assisting in all the nursing cares for you, sir. So I have an experience of four months here. I came here for a small IV procedure so which I need to have an, uh, have an established access for your line for all your medications and your uh, you know, uh, IV therapies. So if, if this kind of introduction uh, happens, the patient know that yes, uh, there is a nurse who is trained with such, such experience, who is coming to do these procedures. So like I'm now confident that there won't be any harm for me. So such kind of uh, you know, trust we enhance in the patients through acknowledgement and interviews like d d stands for duration in edits like duration like telling them what is the duration uh, before going to duration i would uh, you know i like to share my uh, you know experience which was shared from one of my staff like the, the same iv procedure was to be uh, done for a patient who is newly admitted was in the urge of uh, you know uh, urination but the nurse suddenly entered the room with a big tray where the the patient has, is not completely communicated with the patient. Take part of the nurse went into it and told the doctor that ordered a few medications. So I want to put IV for you and to start the medication as soon as possible. There was no time that patient has not given a, you know, an opportunity to express that he is in the urge of uh, you know, urination that he need to avoid first and come back. So in that fear of uh, in the fear and confusion, the patient had rested himself in that. 
and the procedure was little painful. The staff doesn't get it in a first break. So in the second break, the IV cannulation was done. The duration was not explained. So now the extension of time is going on and the patient clearly got, you know, uh, completely, uh, you know, distracted with the procedures. Like it's much time taking and, and now in between, he stopped the procedure and went for the urination and voided and come back. You know, and started said, sister, I was I was in very much urgency in your nation, and you have given me the two breaks, and that has been explained into a different level in next uh, in that after that post procedure to like uh, the satisfaction and the feedbacks was uh, merely went uh, you know negative about the staff who was involved. So while while this scenario is being observed, like duration, if that staff nurse has told that the duration, so the IV cannulation is going to take for me for another three to five minutes so for me to completely close this procedure with an IV therapy for you. So is anything else to be addressed or would you like to go for an washroom or would you like to speak with any of your person so that I might not be get disturbed and your complete under person involvement will be there in the procedure. So if such duration has been explained earlier, most probably the patient could have told uh, if it is going to take uh, uh, about five minutes from for you. So let me go and you know use my washroom and come back for you so that I've been in the right comfort level. So that that kind of uh, you know things uh, can be very much important while we are doing you know such kind of procedures. So this edit tool is going to be one of uh, best thing for patient engagement and also for drug creating. So duration, please do tell that procedural duration to the patients, get their verbal concern because now we are going to invade the patient's privacy. You are into their room, you're going to touch them, you're going to do some invasive procedures. So here, the trust is most important. So that trust comes, that trust can be gained with this communication tool. So after duration of the procedure, side by side, simultaneously, while you're going to do the cannulation procedure, do explain them what you're going to do. Make sure that whatever the device you're using, whatever the articles you're using, just acknowledge them that this is all the things we have been using. Explain the procedure, what it's going to be. Explain them how the tuning coat is going to harm a little. That's painful little painful, a, prick, a painful procedure. IV cannulation is a painful procedure. Explain them that the intensity of the pain, what they can have. So how long you're going to tie the tunic code? Is, is that, is, yes, uh, ideally for every person, tying the tunic code is going to be a little discomfort for them. So explain that these are all the expected things which is going to happen. Gain their confidence. So you might you can you can also engage them that like your experience that so that you can you will be putting the IV cannula in a right way with minimal pain for them. So this kind of uh, talk and engagement and explaining the procedure uh, will always create a good trust on the healthcare providers. Introduce all the equipments for them like the IV cannula. This is what you are going to use and alcohol swab, just when this touches the skin, it's going to be a little cold. So these expressions, if when it is explained, it will be always uh, uh, you know, a good going procedure for you people. You will get a complete 100% uh, you know, trust from the patients and cooperation from the patients. And most important part of the communication is that to thank them for their involvement and their cooperation. So that's where the edit emphasize on T, thank you. So once your procedure is completed, make sure that you thank the patients for their time, their cooperation, so that they feel that they are valued and their time is valued on each and everything, even a small procedure, a kind of an IV insertions, you can gain trust, confident and keep the patients valued in each and every clinical activities you're going to engage throughout their healthcare journey. So that's how this edit tool is going to, you know, uh, keep, uh, uh, keep the trust and also your feedbacks in that thing. So I hope uh, these two tools might, you know, have a positive impact on your patient engagement and in the patient communications. So moving forward, moving forward is the next tool. So 
this teach back uh, this is something uh, you know the weakest part in the uh, the nursing uh, practices as 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 from my own experience like we always we always uh, you know have a lot of patient education activities but uh, hardly the feedbacks from the patient, the feedback in sense, the understanding, it's not about the, you know, the literacy level what you promoted, it's the understanding of the patient. So here, this teach back tool will enhance the, the level of understanding of the information what we give to the patients through their care. So like how it's work is now, for any of the education, uh, like you're going to give the information to the patient. So that is where you tell, you, you tell that information, whatever it is required for a patient. For example, if a patient is in diabetic on insulin, uh, he need to follow up with an insulin injection. So you need to teach them the self-administration of insulin. So now you are going to explain all the procedures and how it's going to be there and how you're going to do the, uh, self administrations the size different size the procedure hunt and next after the information like most of the nurses will have this part they, they will share the information and they will record it in the notes that the patient education is given and few smart nurses will go to the next step like ask them we ask them like whatever information you have given them just ask them and understand that whether the answer is completely, you know, ask them in their own words so that you can, you know, you can evaluate that the level of understanding from the patients. So once you ask, then goes the listening. That is where now you're going to listen that whatever the level of patient understanding from his own words are coming in. So now you can match the information given and the information shared from the patient. If the understanding is completely okay, so if the, if the understanding is completely okay, then if S, the un, if patient has understood everything, whatever is said, now the communication is stopped by saying thank you. So if you understand that if there is some gap in the communication, so now there is no complete understanding is made by the patients, now go back and teach them again. Teach them again, identify what gap has happened, what was the wrong message has been communicated by the patients, where is that uh, communication gap is there? In which information the gap is there? Now reinforce it again. Reinforce it again and reinforce and tell them. Now, again, once the conversation is completed, now immediately ask them to tell their understanding on their own words. So now you will have to listen it again. And then now if the patient is... If the patient, uh, if you ask, and if the patient's information is satisfactory, and when you listen that you understand and you evaluate that completely, the patient has understood what the communication is happened. Now you can close the, you know, close the conversations by saying thank you to the patients. So this this teach back tool always help you in prevent communication error. And uh, uh, I, I, I can give you, you know, a uh, uh, funny example regarding this uh, teach back activity and why it is important to end patient education. So likewise, I started with an example of uh, self-administration of insulin. So there was a nurse who, you know, thought to do an innovative way of uh, patient education. So she brought an orange into the patient's uh, room for educating self administration of insulin. So, so in that while uh, the staff nurse was very effective and was explaining every steps on the self administration. And, uh, you know, she administered a uh, dummy syringe uh, in the orange with the value of what the insulin need to be injected. So she started doing this twice to them and asked the patient to you know redemonstrate the uh, procedure. The, the patient also had done it in a nicely nice way. And the, the education was closed by documenting that the self administration was uh, you know uh, taught and educated to the patients. And meanwhile, during the follow up after fifteen days, uh, the doctor was assessing him, and the follow up visit was found that the patient has an uncontrolled glucose level. So if 
while discharge he was around a controlled glycemic level of 120 to 128. Now, after 15 days of that, his sugar level moves to 320 and 345. The physician was very much shocked and uh, asked the patient that uh, are you not in your controlled diet and in your injection, insulin injections? So it has been now, I, I, I don't have these values. Uh, you know, merely acceptable. So, is there anything happened with you? And you are not in drugs for last ten few days. What was what happened? So, the doctor was probing the patient, and the patient was disappointed. Told him, sir, sir, how much orange I would like to bring, bring for me, to bring for this treatment process. I had bought more than five kgs of orange in fifteen days for two times insulin. I was putting everything in the orange. So this this thing shows this the small thing shows that what was the communication error which has happened here. So the nurse was effectively teaching the insertions, but couldn't ask and listen to the patient's understanding. Couldn't evaluate the level of understanding of the patients. Further, to administer insulin on him, by the showing the demo in the orange, the patient had started putting the injection in the orange every day. So he doesn't receive the injection. He was administering the insulin in the orange. So that's that's how this communication gap has given him an uncontrolled glycemic level in the follower. So in most of the cases, I understand the nurses are busy and are packed with a lot of uh, you know uh, interventions which need to be done on their day-to-day -day life. But a small education feedback for the patients will improve their outcome enormously. So in fact, I would like to emphasize on this. This, this teach back tool is not to evaluate the patient's knowledge. It's, it's going to evaluate the level of understanding what we have been talking. Either it is our discharge education, either it is the discharge medications or follow-up and to come, uh, the wound care, what the patient need to be, please, Follow, uh, please try to you know uh, communicate with the patients and ask the patients to you know give their own understanding on their own words. So that gives us the right communication, you know, uh, technique, uh, right communications. We can identify the gaps. We can you know identify what is the reinforcement required for that communications. So this tool, teach back tool, is going to you know uh, mostly give us an effective engagement with the patients and understanding to prevent communication errors during any of our education activities and the nursing things. And moving next to the communication uh, tool is, which is lead feedback. So now I would like to ask all the nurses uh, in the form that lead back, what, what do you understand in the word read back can can somebody can can you put in the comments that what is read back and how we need to follow that so so the reply is not paying mostly like like i would like to share my own experience as an educator who heading the training and was trained most of the new nurses and joining nurses and reinforcement trainings in the hospital 100% of, uh, you know, whenever I ask this question, it, it's it's really my own experience, like 100% I'll get a wrong answer. So most of the nurses is misinterpreted this feedback phenomena into and repeat back. And first of all, the read back is the word itself says, read it back. To read back, you need to have something to be written. So that's that's the importance. What is need to be here, and most of the time when I ask this uh, question, it will end up with a repeat back signal. So read back is something where in uh, you know telephonic orders or any critical call values which is shared and chat through lab through you. So you need to first closely listen closely to what the person is saying, then. You need to write down the message appropriately in and writing. Like if you are talking about an ex-patient in fight and room, 
So before starting your conversation, before the feedbacks, if it is a telephonic order for critical results or a telephonic order by entreating team, make sure you take the right file in your hand and as per your institutional policy in which page or whether it is need to be documented in a nurse's notes or a separate sheet for the critical alerts are there. So make sure the right documentation is uh, in the hand and after listening closely, write down the message, what it is conveyed through the telephonically. And now then to confirm that the order what you written was as the same what it is delivered from the other side, read back. Read back whatever it is written and confirm from the sender or the person who is in telephone on the other side and make sure you confirm by the message by read back once if you get an affirmative positive uh, you know thing positive feedback that yes that's the order which it was done that's the value which was shared for you from the lab and now after that now confirm you know, confirm it read back and confirm the message so that's how this communication uh, that's how this feedback tool need to be followed and most here is importantly, which I need to tell you is this is not a verbal order record. So feedback is not a verbal order. Never follow a verbal order. Verbal order is only meant for the emergencies. So this feedback techniques is used only for critical alerts or critical communications through telephone or a telephonic order for, from a treating team which need to be followed. So that's where this feedback tool will help you improve. Because most of the time when you have a conversation telephonically, the voice might get break or you might sound alike, few words, a few injections, a few doses. So to prevent that communications error in the system, you have to have a write down the message and read back it again to confirm from the communicator that the right message has been documented. So this tool will prevent you in uh, you know telephonic misconversations and critical alerts readings. Most common mistake what nurses used to do in this is they used to write in a small sheet of paper the values which was taken from the uh, labs or the doctor's order and they might have missed and they might have missed the documentation in their own notes as per their uh, you know hospital policies. So they miss this communication. So misleading happens. So this gap in the communication can create uh, uh, an unexpected uh, treatment processes or error in the patient's uh, you know care curriculum. So that's why the feedback is most important. So the next uh, moving towards to the next tool is spike. So here. Uh, though this spike is, uh, you know, mostly important, uh, you know, uh, it's most important for a physician, like most of the breaking bad news, uh, bad news is done from the physician side. So this spikes is to embrace the patient approach in breaking the bad news. Though the nurses doesn't play much role in breaking the bad news, as this is an empower hour, so we are going to empower, like, uh, empower the tool spike. To the nurses that they might they might be sensitized that how uh, breaking bad news can be uh, given in their healthcare system. So this spikes S stands for setting like for any of the conversations which are going to break. Now you're going to give some bad news to the patient. So make sure that the setting that's the environment need to be very comfort non-threatening for the patients and make sure uh, you have been kept comfortable for the patient or the patient's carers who is going to receive the information. Now, anyhow, there will be a lot of questions which is running in their mind that uh, what's happened for their patients or something. So now you're going to uncover to the patients and family that what that has happened. So their perceptions uh, need to be uncovered. So you're going to tell them and you're going to tell what it has happened exactly for them. So what is the bad news? It has happened in a right and respectful manner. And now after completing your communications, make sure that you're inviting them or ask patients that whether they would like to know something else or is there anything else they need for an understanding purpose. So once that I has been done, now next moving into A, knowledge. So here knowledge, now you're going to explain, uh, you know, whatever things if they asked, 
even if, if in the previous step, if the patient or patient carer asks you something that there is some questions have been merged after your communications, you can now go into and give them the knowledge of what it is done and especially do not use any medical jargons in that. So be in simple language, understandable. And if you want help of any interpreter who's like to have in case of any requirement, you can ask for the interpreters and you can, you know, give the information and give them the complete knowledge for them. And always respect the feelings. Might This might create an emotional outburst in two of the patient attenders or the patient carriers. So respect their feeling, respect, respond with empathy. Make sure that uh, the process, the bad news, the, the communications which is happened is always be respect and responding with empathy. Never go with any other vague comments on the patient's happening. So this uh, tool of spikes, you know, will help you in uh, making sure that the bad news is given in a right way uh, with controlled, you know, controlled emotional environment. And most most of the time, in most of the places in the healthcare system, this breaking the bad news might create a lot of uh, dissatisfaction about your care. So if you follow such tool, where you keep the patients much comfortable, keep the patient attender very comfortable in a closed environment, confidentiality is maintained in a closed room, very comfortable uh, uh, serving them in water before the conversation, keeping them much comfortable and opening up what has happened for the patients, clearing all the questions, uh, whatever is there, any misunderstanding regarding the care can be cleared by that. Giving the knowledge is what it is required, uh, uh, what required for the patients and patient attendant and understanding their emotional feeling with an empathetic talk. So this might will, you know, have, a, 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 it will turn the table of what the bad news, you know, the outcome or the outburst, which is going to happen from the patient side. So that's how this tool is going to uh, make you uh, clear about breaking the bad news. And now the another tool of uh, open disclosure, so this open disclosure is all meant to share the transparent information or any you know mishappening happened uh, mishappening experienced by the patient uh, during the stay like uh, any harm for the patients like medication error you know any wrong surgery or any and any other harm which is related like pressure injury for the patient then. so through, through that thing, uh, this open disclosure will help the healthcare, healthcare professionals communications and support from the patients and their families, uh, whoever you know uh, experienced harm during the healthcare processes. So this disclosure will give you a patient right, uh, you know, which is anchored in a right professional way. With uh, you know, I will always appreciate uh, good clinical practices, and it's to be a part of the care continuum. So coming to the open disclosures, so how how does and what are all the principles which is need to be followed during this uh, open disclosure is first is openness and timeliness of communication. So any communications it need to be given on time. Do not delay in sharing the information with the patients and patient carers. So though it is an arm. Um, but you have to respect that patient and patient's family have to be informed. So make sure that open communications happens in the timely way. Now acknowledge whatever the information is given to them. So make acknowledge in the sense like though in few cases uh, like unavoidable pressure injuries occurs to patients who are in you know very critically ill. We has an order of you know restricted movement. So over there, there, there are few research studies shows unavoidable pressure injuries. Though it is an unavoidable as per their clinical status, but some harm has happened to the patient. So give them the complete knowledge and information about the patients. How 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 much you tried to prevent that event, but even after, in spite of all your commitments, the error has happened. So make sure and acknowledge that the information is rightly delivered and then to the patient and patient carers. And express your regret and apology. Always proactive apology for the harm which is created will keep 
calm the patient's emotions. You can you can be you can control the patient's emotions with your right information, timely acknowledging what is happening for the patient, keeping the transparent communications in their clinical health, and expressing the apology. Make sure that it's it's you know you know it, it is going to make sure that the patient uh, is to be in a controlled uh, manner in his emotional burst. Now, next next point is the support for staff. You know, you, your staff has been all involved in that. So make sure the uh, management need to support the staff itself because they are the second victim in the incidents. So you have to support your staff and all the materials, the patient details, all the staff involved will need to be, and you could be very confidentially dealt by the administrative people. So the matter of confidentiality need to be emphasized in the open disclosure. And once that confidential, then uh, then always recognize for the reasonable and expectation of the patient and their support persons. So this though uh, though all this process are uh, much important for the clinical and physician prospective because they are the one who is going to you know communicate with the patient for the clinical arms. When I'm considering this and open disclosure in a nursing perspective, so this thing can be, you know, uh, you know uh, incorporated in the self-reporting of errors, like any medication error which is done or wrong medication has been administered. So from a nursing perspective, you can use this, uh, you know, communications for self-reporting. Like once uh, any a medication harm or wrong dose is administered for the patient, the assigned nurse can open up, uh, you know, immediately by checking their orders and when he identifies that the error has happened, immediately she can explain to her, uh, you know, uh, vertical manager or to her, uh, you know, quality team or an in charge that this has happened and uh, such such error has happened. So I am the responsibility of this. So because of this situation, the error has happened. Now you are acknowledging all the information. You are transferring, uh, you know, you are making sure that uh, by this cause, the error has happened and you express your, you know, apology to your senior or your reporting manager regarding the error which has happened. And obviously the next three things are from the administrative level, like, uh, Though the uh, though the error has happened, but it has been self-reported. You need to you know appreciate the staff who came up you know proactively to tell that the error has happened to her. So the support need to be there for her in other proceedings like the RCAs or any reporting level reporting comments need to be there. So you need to support the staff and make sure the blame culture is not followed. So like keeping her in a comfort zone so that she will be there and she will be acting as uh, you know as an uh, ambassador for you to make sure the self reporting is happening in the right way no hidden uh, things are happen the staffs are not hiding any of the errors which is happening in the unit level so keep the staff do not uh, you know argue or do not express these activities and you know pronounce her name in every meeting that mistakes has been happened in such way make sure the confidentiality of the person is maintained irrespective of the error which has happened so that person uh, the person or the assigned staff might be confident and uh, show that she trusts the you know the manager that she kept her the confidentiality so she might uh, you know have you know, uh, uh, prevent any such errors in the further with a positive mindset, not getting harmed by questioning or spreading a name in a negative way. So this uh, open disclosures in a nursing perspective can be involved and utilized for uh, self-reporting uh, errors uh, for the assignment, for the staffs who are coming proactively and accepting their mistakes and, you know, uh, accepting their mistakes on which, and so that they can correct things can happen. So most importantly, this open disclosure uh, process in self-reporting will announce the team of learning from errors. So this, this is one least activity which occurs uh, after the errors. So we might not concentrate on learning from errors. So if this, uh, open disclosures has been followed with support, confidentiality, and uh, you know recognition for the reasons. Once all such activities are done, so it will always support you to make sure 
uh, you know, that uh, the open disclosures create a platform for learning from errors so that the next time the errors of the same reasons can be prevented, sensitized, and it can improve the confidence of the staffs who are in the clinical uh, level. So open disclosure is most important uh, in a kind of a non-nursing prospective. When coming to the patient as a partner level, as I earlier told, like patients' involvement in a small hand hygiene project has increased the hand hygiene, uh, you know, audit process and medication, you know, errors can be reduced. Unexpected errors of medication can be reduced. Like if patient is engaged with the, uh, with the, with the nurse and the clinical activities, like when medication is going to be administered, if a staff nurse call out loud the medication name and the dosage for the person who's going to be administered. So if this activity continues simultaneously in the every shift, for an example, if a morning staff has called out in the room with the file, taking the medications, called out loud by patients and uh, involvement, like Telma 40 mg to be administered. Okay. So patient also knows that he is getting Telma 40 mg. So the next day, if a person, if a nurse who pitched in uh, for uh, the uh, administration, if the availability of the medication is not there, the Telma ATMG was given. Unfortunately, if a nurse pronounced it, you know, Telma ATMG for giving 40 MG, the medication received was ATMG. If the same callout has been happened in the next day with Telma ATMG, so now patient will be triggered and patient might interrupt you. you no, know, yesterday it was Telma 40 and today you are talking about Telma 80. So he might interrupt you and he might ask you or probe you some questions. Like, is there any dosage change in the medication has happened? So that might, you know, create you a different scenario. Now, the unexpected error, which might have been, which might, uh, you know, be uh, happened might be, you know, cleared because of the interruption which made by the patient. So that's that's what this patient as a partner approach is going to help us in preventing, uh, you know, in preventing the unexpected harms which is going to happen. So currently now, as I told you earlier, that patient-centered approach as we are into the patient-centered approach, but the current system of patient-centered approach is lead appreciated and the patient involvement is done. So once if you transfer this patient-centered approach into patient as a partner approach here, now you're going to be you know, engaged as a team member, not as a care receiver. Here, the patient is also engaged as a team member like other healthcare professionals, like doctors, physiotherapists, nurses. Your patient is also is going to be included as a team member. So suggestions, options, you know, can be taken from the patients for his own, uh, uh, you know, own clinical plan, which is going to be planned by the healthcare professional. So this kind of patient as a partner approach will, you know, will actually work towards the patient safety and and uh, you know it is going to always reduce the unexpected errors especially medication errors or any other uh, you know errors which is going to be there where we are going to educate the patients include them in all care particulars giving them the right communications on right time communications on every clinical outcomes and clinical activities will always support and promote patient safety in the uh, in your clinical system so that's where the patient as a partner approach is going to be there will you meet that will you meet this will turn into an wonderful approach where patient is included as an healthcare team and care process his involvement will make sure the patient satisfaction rate and patient safety rate will have a definite uh, you know uh, drive towards the positive outcome so that's that's how it's uh, going to happen so yes i'm going to summarize and conclude that currently the healthcare system under uh, you know underutilize the patient expertise in the care planning so the patient uh, engagement can bring a better outcome in, in all means in the clinical uh, factors. So they, they are an additional pair of eye to prevent unexpected uh, 
uh, unexpected errors which can happen with those. And you, all of us can agree that most of the smart, mostly the smart nurses in our systems are going to involve the patient, you know, patient in engagement in all clinical activities, which is going to boost them and which is going to make sure that uh, the better patient satisfaction and the patient safety process has been followed. And they are more likely to be, you know, actively uh, looking for information. So if you, if you ask sir, anybody, uh, any any patients, they would like to hear what's going for them. And it's a, it, it's, it, it's a own uh, a respectful uh, thing that they would like to know what is going to happen for them throughout the journey. And engaging patients, you know, are, are interested in their own health and uh, healthcare professionals can help in, uh, install a great interest in the patient engagement empowering uh, patients to ensure the safe care and emphasizing the patient's involvement uh, all always mean to have an improving the safety uh, you know safety culture which is there it's it's not only the safety culture for the patients it's it's going to create an uh, complete uh, you know uh, the patients the healthcare professionals are going to work together as a own team, so which are going to uh, you know increase their own satisfaction, the work satisfaction, uh, the errorless environment, the patients uh, uh, patients as a partner approach, patient as a second eye in uh, you know uh, reducing the errors. So all this can promote a uh, positive uh, just culture inside the uh, work environment where it is uh, immensely will improve your satisfactory rate and the patient rate. So by closing with this note, I would like to run a small video on why the patient and patient uh, communication is uh, important. So always, always before uh, you know doing any of the clinical activities or clinical goals, ask the patient what is their request, what is their involvement, and what 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 their uh, you know side of uh, information or conversations, their expected and uh, you know, outcomes from the clinical team. So this video will show you the importance of patient's engagement. Uh, so I would like to play this video for you. So please be patient in hearing this video. In order to engage patients as, as partners in healthcare improvement, I, I hate to say it, but the answer appears to be appallingly simple. Ask them. Um, I had the opportunity. I had the opportunity to talk to um, the different patients of, of whom I am one, working with the ten improvement teams that we have at the primary care clinics at Cambridge Health Alliance. And I, I asked them all, "Why are you doing this?" Every single person said, "Because my doctor asked me to." The second half is you have to say. You have, you have to demonstrate that it's important to you that we're there. Not that, that we're not just a checkbox that you need to, you know, just get ticked and tied and set up, but that you can say, how can I help make that possible? Or what do you need? Usually it's very simple. You know, maybe I need a voucher for transportation, or maybe I work full time. And so if your meeting was half an hour earlier, this would be easier. One mother needed it to be okay to bring her toddler to the, to the team meeting and she does and it works fine. He drops a sippy cup, somebody picks it up for him. It's good, but you have to start by asking. What would you describe? Patients, we don't know that there are silos out there necessarily until we run smack into one of them. And one of my favorite stories is about one of the patient partners at a clinic where they were working really hard on figuring out how to integrate, better, better integrate behavioral health and mental health with primary care. And she was sitting in this conversation and trying to figure out how much of the notes should get shared and still protect the patient's privacy. And at one point she looks up and she says, wait a minute, if my psychiatrist prescribes a medication for me, are you telling me that my primary care physician doesn't know that? And he said, no. She said, hold on. The nexus of my trust in the, you know, the mental health in the psychiatrist is coming from my primary care doctor. If you do something, 
I want to make sure that he knows about it. And everyone looked up and said, oh, yes, of course. I think there's something very elegantly or almost freeingly simple about having a patient say, I need this to work. I need you guys to talk to each other, or I need this process to move more smoothly. And people look at it and say, you're right, you do. And then they work together to make it happen. So uh, by this video, uh, I would like to conclude the patients, uh, not only uh, you know, the active member of their own uh, healthcare, uh, team, but there are involvement in research and provides valuable things like if the patient is engaged. In order to engage patients. Sorry, as the video is repeating. Thank you. And I, I would like to uh, close the conversations like the patient as a partner approach has an immense effect on the safety culture and the satisfaction in the care processes for the patient. So uh, keeping and engaging the patients in throughout their clinical activities will help you in promoting the safety culture. So thank you. Thank you for your presence and your patience for hearing about engagement of patient and patient's care. Thank you, Vinod. Uh, maybe you can stop sharing your presentation. Thank you. So thank you, everyone. Uh, so uh, this last um, almost 60, 70 minutes that we have discussed engaging with patients and carers, it is proven beyond doubt that the more we engage, the better results we are going to get. Just think about someone falling sick in your family. What are we going to do? Are we not going to engage with them, tell them what is going on with them, what treatment needs to be done, whether they have any questions? As it's a very simple principle, but the question is that, are we engaging with our patients and carers enough? There is enough being written about it. And uh, even for this, um, Patient Safety Day, there is so much of discussion around involving patients, asking them, listen, check, and ask whether they have understood what we are trying to tell them. So Vinod has taken us through many different communication tools that can be you know, trained and taught to students and nurses. And the most important part is not to remember the full forms of all the acronyms. It is more important to know how to apply that in our real life knife. Classical example of read back. I totally agree with Vinod when he was telling that it's a very, very common mistake. You know, when you ask someone to demonstrate, you know, uh, if you do a role play with them and you just call like a doctor and you will see the uh, person receiving nurses, you know, they tend to listen and say, okay, I will do. So you ask me to do this. So they think repeating that is the right way to do, but we know that communication, no communication, miscommunication or, you know, wrong communication are one of the top three reasons for sentinel events in healthcare. There is enough evidence out there. So everything that we are discussing in the WHO patient safety curriculum, if we try to implement them, apply them in our workplace, I'm sure that we can make our patient care far more safer. And I really hope that you will share this information with your colleagues, your friends, your new system, and please catch up on our you know, videos on our any YouTube channel. And we invite you to our annual patient safety conference on 20th of September from 11 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And we have very expert speakers, national and international and interesting tracks planned for you. So I hope you'll block your calendar and time and hope to see you on September 20th. Post that last Saturday, we'll come, we will come back with topic nine of the WHO patient safety curriculum that is infection prevention and control. So happy learning and happy transferring of learning to your workplace. And thank you once again, Vinod, for uh, taking the session. And thank you all of you for being with us for the last one hour or so. Thank you and have a good weekend. See you next on September 20th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for Thank you for Annie uh, giving me this opportunity. Thank you.